Welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this instructional video, we review the material derivative, which is a common operator in fluids and other thermal sciences. I hope you find it informative. The material derivative, also known as the substantial derivative, provides a time rate of change for a scalar or vector for a given particle in a flow field. Let's define some terms starting with the velocity vector. We'll use Cartesian coordinates. The velocity vector is broken down into three directions, x, y, and z, as shown. The material derivative is typically written with capital letters to readily identify that it is a material derivative. The material derivative consists of two parts, the local time derivative and the advective derivative. Physically, the local time derivative accounts for the transient behavior of the entire flow field. The advective derivative accounts for the transient a particle experiences as it transits to different parts of the flow field. We will go over some examples to help clarify. Let's use the material derivative to determine the acceleration of a particle in a flow field. Consider a fully developed, incompressible, steady state flow through a straight pipe. Since it is steady state, the local time derivative is zero. It is a straight pipe, so the continuity equation tells us that the partial derivative of the velocity with respect to x is zero. The y and z components of velocity are also zero. All terms are zero, so the acceleration of the particle as it moves from location A to B is zero. Now let's substitute a nozzle in place of the straight pipe. Once again, it is steady state, and the y and z components of velocity are zero. However, now the partial derivative of velocity with respect to x is non-zero, in fact it is positive. A particle does accelerate as it moves from location alpha to bravo. The particle undergoes a transient change in velocity, but this is still steady flow. The definition of steady state is that the partial derivative with respect to time for the flow field, or the local time derivative, is equal to zero. Now let's return to the straight pipe, but consider the situation as we transition from a pump running at slow speed to running at fast speed. With incompressible flow, velocity gradient with respect to x remains zero throughout the pipe. The partial derivative with respect to time is positive as the flow field transition from the slow speed flow to the fast speed flow. The entire flow field undergoes an acceleration during the pump shift. Now let's apply the material derivative to temperature, which is a scalar quantity. You're riding in a bus with the windows open that is traveling up a hill. It is at night and the local temperature is dropping at a rate of 1 degree Fahrenheit per hour. The bus is traveling at a speed of 30 miles per hour up a 10 degree incline. Find the time rate of temperature you experience on the bus. First, let's define the coordinate system. We only need to consider the x and y directions. Let's write down the material derivative and simplify. There are positive velocity components in both the x and y direction and a temperature gradient in the y direction. From the problem statement, the partial derivative of temperature with respect to time is minus 1 degree per hour. The partial derivative of temperature in the y direction is minus 10 degrees per mile. We do not need the x component of velocity since there is no temperature gradient in the x direction, but we do need to determine the y component of velocity. From geometry and the provided speed of the bus, the y component of velocity is 5.2 miles per hour. Putting it all together, we find that a person sitting on the bus will experience a temperature change of minus 53 degrees per hour. That is a pretty significant temperature drop in one hour. This is likely why my wife always brings a sweater and or jacket, yeah, which I end up carrying. I hope you found this instructional snippet useful. If so, then please like and subscribe. Thanks and have a great day.